okay first things first where have i been on the weekend so i've been out for i've been going out quite a bit actually pretty decently mostly one night a week um because sometimes my days are from middle of the week so i can't usually do weekend stuff which has been interesting because i definitely try to avoid going out on fridays because from my experience having spent some time promoting parties for like what five or so years mostly in a similar sort of area in east london the common the common thing that you go into it thinking naively when you're doing promoting is that oh you're gonna make loads of money on halloween you're gonna make loads of money on fridays you're gonna make loads of money on new year's eve and usually those are the hardest days to make money because there's so much competition with other things going on you know around town and usually fridays are usually the worst time to go out especially in that sort of like shoreditchy dawson sort of area you avoided going out on the fridays because that meant everyone was going out on fridays because that was when everyone finished work especially around that area liverpool street old street where people have offices and stuff that usually a member even at the place i used to work at not sure if you have guys have the same thing wherever much you city you're based in but there'll be times especially if it was like a payday weekend that fell nicely on like the end of the week some of the girls there would you know be buying stuff from like asos or whatnot um h&m whatever store they're buying for outfits in mind of going out on that friday and it'd get you know do the makeup at the end of the day maybe sometimes on fridays you might end the day a bit early so if you stand there ending at six you might end at five five thirty so they'll get glammed up and they'd go out and it basically change at work and then leave their stuff and then pick it up on monday when they come in obviously first um first day of the week so that meant you had a real cohort of people leaving to go out after work at the end of the week on friday and you also had the people who went home and came back out again so fridays have always been a bit of a myth for me so i've always avoided them and i've always kind of try to make my days out usually on the saturday um or the thursday kind of an odd one to do but usually thursdays especially wednesdays back in the day in shoreditch those areas hoxton haggerston hackney wednesdays were a sick night to go out on because usually that was when you could avoid all the kind of you know regular normie folk and usually them far more interesting nights in terms of music people could take more chances because you don't want to just hear boom bat boom you know boom 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 for the whole night you could take chances a bit more eclectic in terms of the crowd and the mixture of people age ranges blah 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 so the whole friday thing is a bit of a myth to me but obviously the last few weeks i've been doing it quite often and it's also been quite cool because i think we're in a weird post pandemic sort of time where it does for the most part as i mentioned plenty of times on here there's definitely a decrease in the amount of people that are outside no one can deny that for sure and i don't feel those people are ever coming back because i think that was a kind of normie ish crowd that you know a lot of people in the dance music industry took for granted people or maybe even us in terms of seeing people we kind of look down upon them but those people who would maybe buy a ticket to love box who would buy a ticket to you know whatever festival happens in you know like a dick mantle or whatnot those normie crowd people who would fill the gaps here or there were the ones that sold stuff out because there's a core group you'd imagine the core sort of fan like myself maybe other people who follow these artists who who buy you know songs on juno and you know visit record stores who go to flipping phonica for the little indie dj stuff and maybe listen to nts that's kind of a core kind of fanboy type person and then there's a normie kind of person who just listens to whatever it's cool maybe checks out what's the most trending or ra pick of an event on ra you know buys a thing that's got marketism on instagram but those people definitely help to kind of bolster the numbers but they've gone now so the night's out are far different than what they were prior from what i've seen i think i've seen festivals be the same for the most part especially the big ones they're still four the ones that that should be four are still four but the other nights are kind of it's a mixture and so far i think from the times i've been in london or i've been out in london sorry i can't think of a single night with maybe the exception of that time i went to fabric to see ricardo play and of course it's ricardo but i can't think of a single night in london that i've been out so far that's been legitimately full like full like okay we are full i think a lot of the, even the sellout events i've been to were lies they were kind of sellouts in terms of oh they sold out of the allocation online but not actually sold out of tickets you can still get them on the door if you go early so it's a bit of an interesting one so when i go out so when i go out now at the end of the week which i went out the other week to fold for this event called mannequin presents uh, sorry, four percent mannequin records, um, featuring a lineup of Ricker, 
um, Alessandro Adriani face Fatal and Jess and legitimately it was a really fun night far more busier than maybe previous nights I've been because maybe they have I think the DJs playing have a far more of a pull than the people that I saw prior but overall the crowd as per usual obviously you know always the best over there I think it obviously helped that I arrived quite late I think I arrived at like 1 32 a.m after i watched the ufc fight night i was still kind of you know glued on watching that so i kind of had to kind of wait to kind of get that over and done with before i could leave which was a bit of a bad move because it meant i didn't have much time to rave but you know because i got my bike now i could just jet over there in like 15 minutes if that which has been real handy it's obviously a bit of a myth on the way back if you know what i mean but going there is cool um, you know just got to make sure I pick the right attire to kind of cycle there but usually it's just fine it's not too much of a, of a hassle there's lampposts and kind of fencing right outside the club so if you just lock it up there and it's in a really dead end area you're not going to have passers by trying to go there and nick your bike so that's going to be pretty decent um, I had a bit of a hiccup a bit of a scare just before I arrived I was sorting out my lock before I got to the venue and for some reason I guess I dropped my phone without realizing because my, my music was still playing and then I only realized because of the music stop playing because i was out of distance and then by the time i popped around the corner another guy was walking down the road because he's just kind of his car and he picked up the phone i was like oi and he turned around and just gave it to me but he wasn't going to give it to me he was walking away do you know what i mean it was like jesus christos mate that would have been an absolute mad one to start the night off with um first thing again to complain about just because you know it's good to be honest about these sort of things as great as the venue is and as great as i love everything that they do over there one of the things i'm a little bit annoyed about still is the lack of set list being published you know especially on the same night as the event i get you don't want to do it beforehand i still don't get it don't get me wrong because i think it's just nonsense i think if the best club in the world like berkheim can put out their set list a few days before the event can, is going to be on i think these other clubs can do the same thing for sure um in the uk i know for sure beforehand the idea around it was that you didn't want people to just come to see the person playing you want them to turn up to see the whole thing because i guess it's not enough to just get the ticket secured because some of you would think oh what's the point of doing that holding onto the set list and kind of holding people hostage or making sure they come so they can you know get more money in the bar well effectively they bought a ticket anyway so you've already made that back but i guess some of these events or some of these spaces they they've got such a high operating cost they just have to kind of try and get black as much money as they can black get back as much money as they can from every avenue so if they can guarantee that you are go gonna buy a ticket and they can also guarantee that you're going to arrive um with enough time for you to drink and you know spend at the bar that kind of increases their ability to recoup but somebody that goes out a lot it's just annoying not to know who's playing or what you're missing before you get there now don't get me wrong common sense would tell me that the way they put the lineup together that most likely the headliner would be jess considering the level of people out there especially she put out an album recently you know that makes more sense and then maybe the one before would be faith faith town knowing his connections and him being somebody that plays at all the big venues out there in berlin i'm not i'm not familiar with alessandra adriani but Rick i've seen a few times on Hor on hiv pronounce that flipping radio station in berlin so common knowledge or common sense would probably tell you that most likely this is the opening then next then next then ending you would assume so but i would still want to know ahead of time don't let me get there and then find out when i get there obviously when i got there i was able to take a picture of the set list because they do have it on the side of the toilet so i guess if you've got your take your phone taped up you're not gonna be able to take a picture but you can just note it down if you want to they've usually got the set list you know on the little bit of paper next to the toilets there in the main room so that was fine to get the set list and then by the time i was there face face tower was playing uh, i think he just started i was there right there maybe at 2 30 so that was pretty sick to see um that sort of like let, let's just call it that quintessential sort of berlin sound or how should you call it uh whatever try and think of whatever other place to call it that really hard fast techno is something that is slowly but surely be not so but surely it's becoming a lot more popular here in the uk right in london especially but i still feel like for the most part just because of how we're set up it still takes a bit getting used to to kind of really enjoy it because of the times that we're open you know for the most part fold is one of the places that close you know one of the latest clubs that close um, in terms of closing time sorry so 6 a.m is still quite late for us even though it's not really late in all things you know all things considered 
So it takes some time to get used to, especially for myself. If I'm arriving there at half two and it's closing at six, it's a bit of a myth. Even if it did start at 10, 8 p.m., don't get me wrong, but most places, you know, especially if you go to, let's use Berlin as an example, even though it's, but it's not a fair example to use, but still, you know, the events are starting at 12. You're leaving there by like maybe 10 a.m., maybe 12 a.m. the next morning. So you've got a lot of time to really get into the groove. So that's the only thing that's a bit of a concern, I feel like, for me, especially that sound. Forget the time that I went there. I think just more so the, the kind of tempo, uh, the feel, whatever it may be, right? It's just, it requires you to kind of get into the groove. But because it smacks you over the head so quickly, you don't force to kind of just figure it out, which is fine. I figured it out. I thought Face of the Towers was wonderful. Um, even though it was really banger heavy, I felt like he did a good job of kind of carrying the groove and sort of providing a platform for Jess to come on after him, which I thought was a really standout set. Um, somebody that I've kind of been a fan of for a while, and I think I was meant to see her play, if I'm not mistaken. There was events she was meant to play. It might have been at some. It might have been at the. It might have been at the other venue they have, whose owns fold. What's it called? The glove that fits. I think so. I think I bought a ticket to go see her play. The glove that fits. It's meant to be an event there happening, um, but then I think that happened. That happened to coincide when the lockdown happened either here or in Berlin, and obviously that event got postponed or got cancelled. So maybe this is the makeup one. I'm not too sure. But regardless, big fan, and she was amazing definitely a standout set for the whole time i was pissed i had to go outside for a few minutes here and there to kind of gather myself whatnot but definitely one of the standout sets there was just uh, really 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 good just health as telter skelter again very groovy which is probably the only difference you see from these kind of high level sort of like Berlin DJs and what we have here in London, I think we still got really, really great techno DJs, but I think for the most part, because of how, you know, our clubbing scene is set up, there's not a lot of groove. You kind of have to go in with an hour set of bangers ready to go. You can't really vibe your way into a night, but you feel like with the Berlin crowds, because they're used to playing longer sets or maybe they're used to playing sets at weirder times, they're used to kind of having tunes in their arsenal that can kind of, you know, um, work up to a really high, high, high crescendo. And I think that's what I ended up seeing at Jazz because by the end of it, everyone was hooting and hollering, screaming and shouting, you know, giving her loads of love, myself included. And you could definitely see that she had held everybody's attention for the majority of that set towards the end. So that was really, really cool to see. And of course, at the end, everyone was looking for the after parties to go to, which I kind of participated in, knowing for what I wasn't going to be able to stay because I'd work the next day. So that was a bit funny. And then I think most people ended up going to unfold the next day, actually. It was on Sunday, which I still haven't been to. For all the times I've been, again, I went to the very, very first fold party, which I'm actually going to upload a really funny little audio clip of me in the toilets, high up my mind, you know, giving them all the props. But that was funny back in the day. So I've been to the first, first party when they opened up like 2018 or something. But I've never been to an unfold. It's just because it's on a Sunday, you know, I can't wrap my head around going out to a rave rave on a Sunday, but I think I have to kind of give it a little look in going forward because for the most part, they have some really interesting bookings in. That's where they even give a lot of the young up and coming talent a chance. People that they may be looking to make residence in the future, they get a shot to do that there in it. So maybe that's not sure to go forward. But yeah, as per usual, one of the best clubs, great bartenders, like it's stuff that you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't mention because it should be, you know, par for course. But if you know anything about London Club and you know how up and down, you know, temperamental all that stuff can be and how much it can really influence your night if you have a really bad experience with a security guard or something. But I think that like, everybody's there is usually really cool, easy to talk to. Um, searches are chill, ticket thing is easy, ID, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, the cloakroom stuff I keep mentioning is a real godsend if you want to leave them in the lockers. Um, for sure, you can do that, especially. So, I'm a big fan of that. Um, and yeah, generally, just a good night. So, I really, really had a good one with that one. Looking forward to more. I think the next one I'm meant to be going out to is maybe the Techno Mate, which is happening on Friday this week. And if not that, then obviously hold out for the Berlin weekend happening in a couple of weeks. I think it's the weekend of. Um, weekend of like the 15th 16th so that might be a good one but yeah it's been a pretty decent one in terms of going out on a friday all things considered because i guess the pandemic has essentially reset the clubbing scene in a big big way the people that were going out prior to the pandemic have definitely moved on to other things 
and um, it's now left some room for people to do interesting stuff so why you're seeing all these cool little festivals pop up and alternative nights here and there he she day or is that how you say he she day or day she hey budokai you've got inferno you've got all these crazy cool nights popping up out of nowhere that have really been propped to prominence i think mostly because there's now room to do stuff people want to take chances they don't want to just go to the same old same old thing anymore um, you're seeing less of the bait Sven Var flipping bookings happening all the time which do happens for the most part in maybe print works there they get all the bait bookings but for the most part there's loads of interesting things going on even in places like E1 E1 the other day had Ellen Allian playing which I'm gutted I missed um, she was playing there recently the other day so it's like they really try and um, kind of diversify the nights more because you have to ha you have to try more interesting things to get people to come out now because people have maybe been I would say conditions, but they've got used to enjoying themselves at home now. So if you want to give, and obviously if you're working from home, you you don't really have the benefit of, you know, club places don't have the benefit of you already being outdoors. You're indoors. So they really need to make the lineup or the party compelling for you to actually leave your house to go to this place. So um, pick up everyone, you know, trying and, you know, putting their best foot forward and trying to make it work, especially the club bookers and event promoters and whatnot. And obviously the people that are going out for the most part have a really good attitude, man. I'm not going to lie. I've not had any bit of trouble at all being out to these places. So that's definitely been a plus on that one. Mm -hmm.